My name is Andrea and this is River. He'll be joining us today and we'll be doing a painting of a cat eye in oil. So first I'm going to show you my palette and how I have it set up and all the colors that I mixed and I'll give you all my recipes for them as well. Um, and then I'll reset up the phone and I'll be working right there on canvas. And if you notice, I toned it with actually yellow ochre and that's with acrylic so it dries faster. And that's right here. So just simple yellow acrylic, nothing fancy. And it's all dry so that way when I go on with oil, I can work on a dry canvas. I'll explain why I tone it when I switch my phones to a better positioning. Okay? Hang tight. Okay, so here I have my incredibly messy palette. My plan was to make a new palette for the sake of making videos, but with a five month old, that didn't really get on the top priority list. So the best I could do for today, it's just the first video, bear with me. Um, my palette is basically set up warm colors and cool colors. I have a few extra colors on the palette that are either just from someone wanting to get rid of them or I just had them, I don't even know. But basically I have my Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Cadmium Yellow, I have some white, I have a new favorite color which has worked its way into a final positioning on my palette that's called Ice Blue, and then I have Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Viridian, and Sap Green. Don't mind the purple, that's just a blob that someone wanted to get away and I just said put it on my palette, so it's just living there for now. Alright, now my mixtures I have for my cat eye are as follows. Here I have a black that's actually not black, it's brown and blue and I just call it black because it's easier to say. So it's really not black, it's just brown and blue. I use burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to get my dark value. And here it's basically that same mixture just with a little bit of white mixed in with it. Here I have a little extra brown in it and this one I added a little bit more of the yellow ochre to it. So these are all basically the same color just with a little bit more white or yellow in it. Um, here I just have a little bit of cadmium yellow and a touch of cerulean blue. I think there might have been a little bit of brown left on my palette knife too. Here I have some white with a little bit of yellow ochre and cadmium yellow. And here is a mixture of cadmium red, burnt sienna, and a little bit of cadmium yellow as well. You can kind of see that still in the mixture. Here I have cerulean blue, white, and cadmium yellow. And basically that is my color palette. You might see me um, kind of use a color that you might not have on the palette and it's basically I just might be tweaking it with a little bit more white or a little bit more blue and I'll try to remember to say that when I actually am painting, okay? So I'm going to reset up the phone again and we shall begin. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Um, I have my phone literally taped to a random piece of um, equipment, otherwise known as a floor lamp. So uh, yeah. This will work, okay. So, um, yeah, you can see. So right here we have yellow ochre, like I said, acrylic, it's, full, it's fully dry. This is just eight by 10 canvas board, nothing fancy. And I know I can't see it in the screen, but this is just my iPad and I have a cat eye pulled up as reference. So I will be working from that. I'll kind of pan out when I start to um, work on everything as a whole and I'll show you it at the end. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to start sketching it out and I'm going to try to I'm draw a little bit darker for you. Now you could draw with a paintbrush, you could draw with a pencil, really it doesn't matter either way as long as you feel comfortable doing it. That's all that matters. So I'm starting off with kind of the iris shape. And then I have my pupil here. Now since I'm going to be going in with paint, and oil paint is pretty forgiving, you can always change your drawing as you go in with your paint. Nothing set in stone. Right, River? So I'm going to map out my highlight. Get that in. Yes, you agree. And I have this little squiggly thing. It's just a vein in the cat eye. I love those things. And then we have our tear duct area. Now some areas that I don't really see a lot that's going on in the reference, I'm not going to draw it out to the T because I don't see what's going on. And if it's going to be dark anyhow, why draw what we can't see? It's kind of my philosophy there. So anything that's also not a concrete line, what I do is I kind of make more of a wiggly line. And I know that's really not a technical term, but that's how I relate and that's how I use my terminology. So if 
that works for you, great. If not, I'm sorry. Any other parts that I'll be sketching in are just the markings. So I have this little black area coming out and I have this white area that will be filled in here. This is all gonna be fur. Okay, and basically that is the gist of my drawing. There's really not that much other areas that I think I should put in. Um, if you feel like you need to draw in more, that's absolutely fine. Draw as much as you need to, to be able to get a nice strong painting in. And I think we'll begin. So I'm gonna use a flat brush. I'm more of a fan of flat brushes personally. Um, I'll show you my brush before I begin. If I could find the right brush, my favorite brush. I do tend to gravitate more towards smaller brushes. This is kind of the brush that I'm using right now. It's just a nice little synthetic flat bristle, crazy kind of brush. So I'm gonna start off with my black. Now I do have a little bit of medium on my palette as well. It's liquid. It just basically helps the paint be a little bit more fluid. It also helps the paint dry a little bit more. And I'm gonna start laying in my darks. I'm using a good amount of paint. Now, sometimes I'll do what's called an underpainting and I'll, I'll definitely do a demo of that, that's fine. But for the sake of today, I just kind of wanted to show you the paint application. But an underpainting is always a very important thing to do. So there will be a time where I do that for sure and a specific demo pertaining to that. This particular demo I'm doing today is basically just kind of feeling out if I have a decent camera, <laughs> if you can hear me well, if there's any interest in people looking at these things, and if for today's sake, um, if River can actually handle me doing a demo, <laughs> well then. I don't know what that would mean, but hopefully that's a good thing. So, once again, I'm just putting in my darks. Hey, River. And there's gonna be a little highlight on the tear duct area. This is called the waterline, technically. So, I'm gonna kind of isolate a little bit of that if I can. I think River's getting hungry. And then I'm gonna start putting in all the darks of the fur I see. Now my brush stroke here, if you notice, is kind of going in the direction of that the fur grows. So, you don't like that, huh? That's okay, you don't have to like it. It's okay. I think River wants to watch and he's facing me. So let's see here, we have in our tear duct a little bit more dark. The paint's kind of coming off my brush a little bit and that's okay. And let's see, we have a little bit of some darkness kind of coming off from the waterline here. Notice it's a little bit more of a softer edge because I'm using a dry brush. Um, here we have our markings, like I said. And down here, it's kind of like a grayish blend of browns in the fur. So I'm just gonna kind of very lightly put in some of the black because I know that since it's oil, it's gonna mix with some of the colors that I put on top of it. So once again, kind of going with the flow of the hair, very loosely. Okay, so now I'm going to wash my brush in turpentine oil, which I completely forgot to pull out, but now I have it. So, keep my turpentine oil in a nice little container like so. It's wonderful, it's great, highly recommend it. And I'm gonna keep this far away from River, so I don't need him near it. So, wash my brush thoroughly. If you use um, a lot of brushes, that's fine. I kind of tend to use just one or two. I'm just really, um, I'm really particular about uh, cleaning my brush in between colors. So, next we're going to start laying some of the fun colors in the eye. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this fun green. I see a little bit of green kind of around the pupil here. I'm just laying in color. That's all. I'm gonna go right up next to the pupil. And I'm gonna start grabbing into some lighter shades. So I didn't wash my brush in between there because I kind of want there to be some subtle nuances with the color. So my brush application right now, my, my stroke is a little bit more kind of crisscrossy. There's no fur necessarily in the eye, so or let's hope not. So I'm just kind of doing little directional strokes, little up and down, little crisscrosses, just trying to fill in some of the space. 
that's all. Grabbed a little bit more yellow ochre with my mixture. So this is just the base. I can have a lot more fun with some things on top of it once I get some down. I could throw in a little bit more of some intense browns. Are you yawning? You should take a nap. He's yawning. <laughs> little tiny strokes just to fill in the area. Now I'm noticing that I can get a little bit more yellow in there just to liven it up a tad. I'm swaying as I'm painting so it's a little tricky. This is a challenge in itself for me. It just goes to show, even for those of you that have little ones at home, so far it's somewhat manageable. You know, you could totally still paint. Of course, my guy's not running around yet. I'm sure that will change. But stay tuned and we'll find out how that works when the time comes. So, once again, little crisscrosses. I'm going to wash my brush, dry my brush again. I'm going to let there be a little bit more lightness happening in the eye. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my light blue mixture, which is just kind of the ice blue. Just kind of doing a little crisscrosses in there. You want to embrace the texture. Growing up, I always used to kind of smooth things out too much. And, you know, that's great and all, but it's nice to have texture too. So try to allow yourself to have that. Right, River? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that warm brown again. This is that cadmium burnt sienna mixture. Now the reason I toned my canvas, by the way, was so all my lights would look light and all my darks would look dark against a middle value. If I went in and did like a white highlight on a white canvas or painted a white dog on a white canvas or a white whatever on a white canvas, it's not going to stand out. So by having it be a tone first, that helps every color kind of show its true value. It also helps if you kind of forget to fill in some of the spaces or if you want the color underneath it to work for you, that will lend a hand to doing that. Okay, wash and dry my brush. Wash your brush, dry your brush. I think I'm going to turn into Barney singing all these songs. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a little bit of a larger brush, still a flat brush, big fan of the flat, and I'm going to grab some of my very light cream tones. You don't like the cream tones? <laughs> all right, so a little bit of this, and I'm going to lay that color in. If you feel the paint's a little too thick or tacky, use a little bit of medium with it. I'm just using my um, liquid, still kind of blocking in a large chunk of an area, but then here I'm going to use kind of the thin side of the brush. I'm going to start weaving in the pattern of hair going in a direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make sure you do that too. Okay, so I'm gonna go right up next to this little area here. Plop that in. I'm gonna like a little bit of the under color showing through just a tad. Gives it a little bit more interest. If you do use a little bit of turp with your paint, that's another way to get some fluidity. You can see how my strokes are a little bit thinner and whatnot. You just wanna watch the drips, that's all. Mopping in this big section here. This represents a darker spot. Reload my brush. Light colors are very weak, so they need a little bit of a head start or helping hand. So, <laughs> so you need to reload them fairly often if you're contaminating them by mixing them with some darker values. Let's get some brownish grays. 
we're just gonna start to lay those in once again using the side of my brush the thin side mm -hmm. he's usually not this vocal <laughs> he knows he's being videotaped awesome I must say that this is a quite a challenge with a five month old on me. Definitely a first. No, I have not done any practice rounds of this. Like there's time for that. <laughs> so I'm hopping right in and whatever happens, happens. So if it turns out to be a decent demo, great. If not, sorry. <laughs> so this is my black again, which remember is not a black. It's just a brown and blue mixture. If you want more of a cool black, add a little bit more blue to it. If you want a little bit more of a warmer black, notice now that my stroke is a little bit more brown. I added a little bit more brown to it. Notice I'm letting some of the colors kind of peek through. There's a little bit more dark up here. Mm -hmm. and dry my brush and now I'm going to start just kind of reserving the space for a nice bright highlight here this is just white it's actually um not that strong of a white it's permelba white I don't know where my strong white is at the moment but uh try to grab some I also have a lot of medium on my brush so it's a little thinner I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue, mix it with a little bit of white. This color I did not have mixed up. And I'm gonna just kind of start to pop that in some of my little areas that would kind of give the feeling of being wet. These blue, these blue marks actually aren't on the picture, but I just find adding blue just makes it a lot better. So um, it'll lighten that up now. Wash. I think I'll grab my smaller brush for that. A little bit of some brightness there and I'm gonna stick with my small brush wash and dry it and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of some straight up cadmium yellow just to give it a little bit more pop in some areas I'm gonna crispen up some lines so now that I have everything blocked in this is kind of the stage that's my favorite. Now ideally I work on canvases that are already dry usually, like I'll do a layer and then I'll let it dry and then I'll do another layer and then I'll let it dry. But obviously for a demo, you gotta do it all in one shot. So um, this is kind of the stage now where since I do have it all blocked in, yes, I have to be aware of certain areas that are already wet and I don't want them to get too mushy, but this is kind of where the magic happens. So it's, it is my favorite stage. This is just a darker brown, giving it a little bit of kind of a cast shadow from the eyelid itself. Think of our eyelid like a little umbrella, just like on a human too. Always put a little shadow up here and it's gonna just make your eye look a little bit more 3D. All right, I'm gonna take some straight up burnt sienna now. And I'm just gonna to start to kind of put that in some spots too. Now if you feel like it's too bold, which I feel it is right there, I just dried off my brush and now I'm just kind of tapping it into some other areas that I feel it needs. So by no means are there any real mistakes in R. I hate it when people say that. It's just kind of a different route we're gonna take, that's all. A lot of the times in my classes, sometimes people will say, I did it wrong, or why is this not coming out right? Well, it's just different ways of approaching things, that's all. And this is just my way. My son fell asleep, so if you hear him breathing, that's what it is. 
but don't worry, I'm not gonna start whispering. <laughs> so still with the burnt sienna, putting in a little texture. Now, if you have a cat at home and if you've ever looked at your cat's eye really closely, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of texture and things happening in that cat eye, which is what I'm trying to create now with just a little bit more of a textural stroke. We have some darks, we have some lights. You can use this to kind of clean up some edges. You can use this stage to not only add texture, but to refine your drawing. Say you went a little too much in one area, or say you went a little um, too large or slimmed something down too much. Now's the time that you can tweak it. There's only a certain amount you can tweak, so it's something to just kind of be mindful of. If you have too much paint down, sometimes you just kind of have to either wait till it dries or kind of scrape it off or maybe just layer on a lot of paint. I'm not a huge fan of layering on a ton of paint though. Just a good amount to get the job done. Sometimes what I'll also do is I had extra black on my brush. And remember black is just the blue and brown. I'm just gonna kind of put it where I see it's needed. So when you're painting something, unless it's something that has to look like that exact animal or person or place or whatever, take liberty with things. And that's what I'm doing today. Just kind of have fun with kind of taking inspiration from your reference photograph. Or if you're working from a still life, if you want that background a different color, make it a different background. As my awesome idol, Bob Ross would say, it's your world. I always say that in all of my classes, they laugh at me, but that's okay because it makes sense. We're not Xerox machines. We don't have to do exactly what the photo says. Who cares what the photo says? Do what you want. That's important. I'm just bringing out a few little lines from this area, a few little lines up here. And now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of a cooler green. I did have this color on my palette. It's a little bit of the cerulean white Head yellow, kind of like a sea foam color. And I'm just gonna put that in in some spots. Now I wanna make sure that my brush isn't too full of turp or medium, because if it's too thinned down, it's gonna run, it's not gonna have a punch. And I want that punch. I'm also gonna kind of clean up some of the edging around here. I'm reloading my brush really often because if I don't, it's gonna pick up all the paint that's already there and then it won't be as bright anymore. So every two or three strokes, I'm really being aware to reload my brush. If you have a hard time doing that, well, just try not to. <laughs> Set a timer if you have to. Have someone stand there while you paint and say, reload your brush, clean it. Practice makes improvement and the more times you do something, the more you'll be able to remember to do that. All right, let's take a little bit of some brighter coloring now. Now remember, white is a very weak color. It does need a little help. So I'm gonna go on a little bit thicker in some spots. I don't wanna cover up all these little subtle things that I have, because there's texture, there's color variances even in a white creamy tone. Just a matter of keeping your paint light enough to where it actually does something. And I'm still sticking with that same brush I pulled out with in the beginning, reloading constantly. using the thin side of my brush, just kind of creeping in, weaving colors in and out. I'm gonna take a little bit of my dark gray tone, kind of work that in. Now remember, if a color doesn't look too light, it's all about having a dark next to it. So don't keep adding white and white and white and white. If it's not doing anything, it's not gonna do anything. The trick is to have something dark next to it. Let's see, 
I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow under here. And there's this nice little veiny thing happening in the eye that we talked about. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my dark kind of brownish layer and I'm just gonna very carefully just kind of put a little curve in. A little here, a little there, not everywhere. Little white and yellow now, just to kind of make some areas stand out. Little highlights on that little brim, whatever it is, a little vein. There's a couple up here too. I kind of want to break up this highlight a little. Now in the picture it's a little bit more rectangular. But like I said, we're the artist. Okay, so at this stage, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black, I'm gonna refine some of these little um, areas here. Like I said, it's the brown and blue mixture, restating those. Now keep in mind also, I'm doing this fairly quickly. Don't go so fast, breathe, take your time. I'm definitely on a time restraint. I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to watch a video for too long. We all have things to do. A couple little darks here and there still. I can kind of even make a little bit more of a dry brush. I wiped off a good amount of the black on my brush and I'm just going to kind of soften this edge a little bit. Barely any paint on my brush. I'm just tapping it in between so it's not so cookie cutter crisp. Some areas can be crisp. Some areas don't have to be crisp. A crisp area is what your eye is going to go to first. So you have control on what your person is going to look at first, your viewer. Brightening up this little wet spot. Brightening up a few little wet spots here with my blue and white mixture. And I, this isn't in the picture, but I always kind of put a little bit of blue in the pupil just to make it pop a little bit more. Clean brush time, pure white. Nice bright highlight. This is a bristle brush. I don't normally use bristle brushes, it's just what was within arm's length. So you don't have to have some magical brush that cost a million dollars, you know. You can use whatever you want. It's just being aware of color, your value and just having fun, that's all. So if you're interested in seeing more videos, please let me know, otherwise, I don't know, I like making videos, I love teaching, I love giving demos. If you um, are interested, toss me a message, toss me an email, write a comment on, um, I'm gonna post this on YouTube. So it would be great to see if there was any interest and then I could make more and we'll kind of go from there. So I am more of an animal portrait artist, although I'm, I love the landscapes and things like that. Um, so yeah, there'll be demos on all sorts of different things. I just would like to know if there's interest on your end. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna kind of wrap this up. And I would say that looks pretty much like a feline eye. Not so much like this one, but there's the eye, there's the painting. There's the eye, there's the painting. So let's sign it and then we'll be on our way. A lot of times people ask, how do you sign a painting? Well, notice I didn't take up the whole canvas. This is just a demo. So I'm gonna take a little bit of turp, a little bit of liquid with a color, and I'm just using literally the same brush. You don't need a thin brush or anything. I'm just putting it on it.